Manson has been serving his time at this prison in Vacaville, California, isolated from his fellow inmates. Manson's first television interview since the murders begins badly. I know I told you I'm not going to sit in that damn chair, man. I'll stand here and talk with the dude. Manson refuses to sit in the chair provided. He says he's not going to look up to anyone. But finally, Tom Snyder of the National Broadcasting Company asks his first question. You know, you were sentenced to the gas chamber and then they modified the death penalty. Were you happy when that was done? Was I happy when what was done? When you found out that you weren't going to the gas chamber. You're talking about dying. Now, it gets me nervous. Why? Did you have any thoughts about something? Was you wanting to go anywhere? Were you happy when you found out you weren't going to go to the gas chamber, Charles? Uh, I knew I wasn't going to go to the gas chamber because I hadn't done anything wrong. You scared to die? Sometimes I feel I'm scared to live. Living is what scares me. Dying is easy. Uh, how long have I been in jail? 34 years? 34 years, so... Uh, Out of 47, you've been here 34. I've been in jail, uh, prison, uh, a long time, all my life. I was raised up in here. So I understand jail, so I understand myself, and I can deal with that. I set my cell, and I do my number, like a convict does his number. But there's different colors on different people's backs doing different things. There's a different world. I love the world I live in, too, just like Regan loves the world he lives in. You love the world you live in. <laughs> Most assuredly, it's me. You love all the pain that you've caused people, all oh. the anguish you've oh, caused Oh, I don't know pain. I don't know pain. I have no depth of pain. I have no depth of suffering. I don't know ridicule. I don't know all the bad things. I haven't been punished by you all my life since I was 10 years old. I've been in every reform school you got across the country and used to lay down and have to get my ass whipped till I couldn't walk. Tell me about some pain. And that's yeah. our fault. That's all no, those people No watch. fault. Make strong, good pain. Understand pain. Not bad. Pain's not bad. It's good. It teaches you things. It teaches you things. Like when you put your hand in fire, ow, you know not to do that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that. Written accounts indicate that you told the authorities, don't let me out. I can't cope with the outside world. Do you have a recollection of that? And do uh, you, you make do, a and, desperate plea out of something, man. There's no desperate plea out of it. I say, I, I can't use, handle I, the I, maniacs outside. I, Let me back in. I, I didn't use the word desperate. That's your word, Charles. Yeah, well, your, your inflection and your voice tones were uh, implications there. Well, uh, you use the word maniacs on the outside. How are you different? from the maniacs on the outside. And why do you call them maniacs? Because you know something, they think you are one. Yeah, it would reflect. If you hold the negative up to the light, you don't see the light, you just see the negative. So I'm a reflection of your negative, there's no doubt about that. And I can handle that also. I've been handling, ain't I? I don't know, have you? Well, I've been up and down these damn hallways, in and out of these nut wars for the last 10 years. You think you could follow that act? I'm playing for my life. You're working for money. <laughs> when you say you're playing for your life, am I to yeah. assume that you think that someday you're going to get out of here? <laughs> get out of here. Hmm. Get out of here. Where would I go now, see? What would you do if you got out of here? If I got out of here. What if they said they said to you tomorrow morning, Charles, hey, listen, you're free. You can go wherever you want to go do whatever you want to do. What yeah. would you do? I'll probably go out front on the grass and sit down. The question is, should Manson ever go free? It's 10 years now since he and his three female accomplices, virtually robots under his control, were convicted of murder. On August the 9th, 1969, they murdered actress Sharon Tate and four other people in Los Angeles. The following night, there were two more victims, Lino and Rosemary LaBianca. In court, Manson was also charged with two more mutilation murders. Ranch hand Donald Shea was beheaded, and musician Gary Heinemann had his ear cut off. According to some accounts, Manson and his family may have been responsible for as many as 35 killings. If you got out of here, there are a lot of people who think you'd go start killing people again. Again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you guys are misinformed. I haven't killed anyone. I didn't break the law. Judge knew that. 
but the people didn't want to hear it. The judge knew it. He washed his hands. He said, I know it, but what can I do? People want this. The judge never said that. Yeah. The judge never said That's that. what Otis said. No, the judge didn't say that. He got off and shook their hands, didn't he? You were so white and pure. The judge didn't he, say you were innocent. Are you innocent? Innocent of what? Well, that's what I'm saying. None of us are innocent. Yeah, just because you're convicted in a courtroom doesn't mean you're guilty of something. What does mean you're guilty? Well, you know you're guilty. What about Shay? What about him? Well, what about him? He got killed. Well, the word is you killed him. Word is that you're an old woman. Word is you have turkey in the sky. Word is, I don't know what word is. Somebody else tell you that. I didn't tell you Did that. Did you kill Shay? Hell no. Did you cut uh, Hinman's ear off? Hell yes. Why'd yeah. you, why, how'd that feel when you cut his ear off? Uh... What did it feel like? Yeah. Well, I had done what he said for about 20 years. I'd done everything he told me to do. And I got to thinking, now, why don't this guy do something I tell him to do? And he said, uh, no. I said, well, how comes I'm always doing what you tell me to do, but then you never do what I say do? And he said, well, blah, blah, blah. So I said, now you do what I say. And he said, no. I said, you do exactly what I say. And he said, no. I'm telling you. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. You do exactly what I say. And that's about the extent of it. All this all cult, all that hocus pocus stuff that you guys are playing, I don't know nothing about all you that. You know nothing about something called Helter Skelter. Tell me, Charles, I don't know. <laughs> it's a fairy, it's worse than a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. It's a, it's, it's a comedy. It's a comedy tragedy. The body of Sharon Tate is make-believe. Uh, that's make-believe make to, make believe, yeah. make to the people that went in there and did what they did. Mm -hmm. And who were those people? You those, know who, you the, know, yeah. you, but you know who they were. Sure I know who they, they were. They were with you at the Spawn Ranch. They were part yeah. of this thing called, if not the Manson family or the Manson cult, the, the Manson Ranch. Call it what so you will. So then, what? You dealt the hand down in L.A., you and that press, you dealt the hand. You put me on Life magazine, had me convicted before I walked in the courtroom. You had what people wanted to buy. When they wanted to buy it, they didn't give a damn if they had to convict the district attorney. They had convicted the whole building to get that dollar bill going there. They had big bucks going there. They made 27 million, thousand, hundred billion. I'm bumming 10, 15 dollars for my friend here. Here's another newspaper account that you can now speak to since you haven't done it before. That on the night following the uh, killings at the house on Cielo Drive in Los Angeles, you accompanied four people to a home occupied by Mr. and Mrs. Leo LaBianca. Yeah. That you went inside that house mm -hmm. and you tied them up mm -hmm. and assured them that they were not going to be hurt. Mm -hmm. That you went back outside and mm -hmm. sent Kasabian and Krenwinkel and Watson and mm -hmm. Atkins inside the house to kill them. Mm -hmm. True or false? Did you do that? The chair's getting hot, huh? Did you do that? Did I kill anyone? No. no. Did you go in and tie up the Labiancas that night? Very simple question. That night? August 10th, 1969. That night, August the 10th, 1969. Why duck it? Why dodge it? Why not answer it yes or no once and for all, put it behind you? Did I kill anyone? Did you tie up the LaBiancas? Atkins testified you did. That's what Susie said? That's what she said. Yeah. And you remember, you were in the courtroom when she said it. <laughs> She's written three books, and each time she said something different. Mm -hmm. Each time. Did you tie him up? Did I? Mm -hmm. Well, we came down from Abilene. And, uh, Let's stay in Los Angeles, August 10, 1969. There was a hole in the wall gang there. Why don't you want to talk about it, Charles? Why don't you because want to? Because I'm an outlaw, and I go so far, and then that's all you know. 
And if you did, that's like asking Jesse James. And if and it, and and if and, and and if, as others have written yeah. and as others have testified yeah. and as the media has reported, you did that. Yeah. And you sent your friends back in to do the deed. Aren't you a oh, coward? My yeah. friends back in to do the terrible deed. Right. Doesn't that the make wicked you deed? Ta -da. Did we have the castle there with the vampires and the uh, Frankenstein and the uh, bugs and lizards dying in the deserts? Did we have the water that's dying and the whales are being killed and the seals are Here dying? we go again. Lay it off on somebody else. Let's well, point to all the other oh, injustices. I'm, I'm in the world all by myself? Yeah, yeah. On this one, you are. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Who's okay? If that's the way you see it for you. You've never talked about this before, but I'm going to make it. I'm going to try it one more yeah. time. Uh, no, the cards uh, out. Now, uh, the, you can see them where I'm You've got a pistol on you? No, sir. They wouldn't let me in here if I had a pistol. Yeah. You know that as well as I do, so why even ask the question, okay? Well, I just thought you might not like what I've done. You want to do something about it? I don't much care for what you've done. Yeah. A lot of people don't. How do you feel yeah. about that? A lot well, of people think you're a monster, Charles. How do you yeah, feel? they think you're a monster because you reflect this news media on me. Cult leader. I never had a long hair before I got busted. I never had a beard before I got busted. I went to shave, and the guy said, no, you can't shave. And I said, I need a razor to shave. He said, no, you can't shave. Let me get a haircut. He said, no, we don't want you to change your appearance. They said I had a great family, and I was the following and leaders and all that. There was no followers and leaders. A bunch of kids out the ranch playing. To what, me. Playing at what? Playing at living. Do you miss women? Certainly. My goodness. Yeah, damn right. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of women? Oh, I like them. Yeah, they're nice. If they're put together well and everything, and they're soft and spongy, yeah, they're nice. As long as they keep their mouth shut and do what they're supposed to do. Why do you say that? Because that's what a woman's supposed to do. Keep her mouth shut and do what she's supposed to do? Sure. And besides the son that you had in your marriage, you've got, what, four other children somewhere? I don't uh, uh, think I've been uh, 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 responsible for as much as you people want to lay on me. All right, somewhere out there, somewhere, there's at least one son that we know of that's your child, who's probably about 25 or 26 years old. You talk to that kid. What are you going to say to him? You've got to catch it on your own, boy. Train's hard. The road's rough. And that's it. That's all I knew. That's all anyone ever told me. All right. And you want to hear something? Yeah. He'll do it better than me. Do what? <laughs> Whatever he does. <laughs> He'll do it a little better. Kids do, don't they? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what makes them such a guest. They always seem to get through. How were you in school? I hear that you weren't too good, but maybe I heard one. Uh, depends on which school. I did very well in reform school. Yeah. I did good in, uh, in uh, every place that uh, I was ever told to do good in. I've been an outlaw ever since I was born. I went to reform school when I was about 10. And I learned to box and cry. And I learned to do all the things that you do in reform school. Then I went to, uh, I escaped there a bunch of times and I went to prison. And I learned everything that you do in prison. And I talked to all the guys and asked them everything they knew. And they told me all the things they knew. And then I went to the end of it, and then the old man would be ready to die, and he'd say, well, son, uh, sincerity is the best gimmick. Remember that. And I'd say, all right, be sincere. That's, that'll win it. He said, that's it. Sincerity and honesty, he said, it'll do it. It'll trick him every time. <laughs> I said, well, sincere and honesty. I never tried that. <laughs> I tried everything else, but maybe I'll try sincere and honesty. So then I looked in the book, and it says, the wages of sin is death. Now I figured, well, I don't want to die, so maybe I have been sinful here. Maybe I am wrong. Maybe I'll take a look at my life and say, well, I'm going to change it and start all over. You know, and I know I go to God and I say, hey, man, you're going to forgive me? And he's going to say, what do you do? You forgive you? I mean, what did you come to me for? Forgive yourself, man. Don't be bothering me. How do you feel about spending <coughs> the rest of your life in prison? Well, we're all our own prisons. We each are our own wardens, and we do our own times. We used to get stuck in our own little trips, and we kind of judge ourselves the way we do. You know, uh, I can't judge uh, nobody else. The best thing I can do is try to judge myself and live with that. Let's assume that one day you were paroled. Let's just unroll. Well, let's just make believe. Do you ever think you will be? Yeah, do I ever think I will be? Well, I've never been paroled before. I went up to the board, and they never would. They said I was incorrigible. 
And uh, not only was I incorrigible, but that I'd never grow up. <laughs> and I kind of agreed with him. If you got out tomorrow, do you have any scores to settle on the outside? Scores? Uh, do I have any scores out there? And we're making believe, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't rightly know. I'm stupid <laughs> to the point to where I'm not really sure. Believe it or not, there are a lot of people on the outside that think about the possibility of you coming out of here, and they're genuinely scared of you. Oh, boy, I might just, just make dust, everything, terrible. One little guy, terrible, ooh. Boy, how insecure are we as human beings? Put all our fear on one little guy, afraid to let him out. <laughs> he might break all the toys. <laughs> Why do you say little guy? <laughs> because I'm not the guy you're trying to make out of me. That's not me. I don't know what my way is. Everybody keeps telling me I got all these things. I read the other day where I had magical powers, and I told everybody in the chapel, I said, zap, 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 zap. I said, where's my magical powers? <laughs> Well, you can't read, you can't believe what you read in the press. I can get no magical powers, mystical trips, and all that kind of crap. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of silly. Yeah, we got witches and devils, and um, one guy come up and said, I, I heard you said you were Jesus. I said, uh, no, man, I ain't said nothing. He said, I'm glad. He said, I'm damn glad. I said, why? He said, I know you ain't him. I said, how do you know? He said, because I am. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I've been in the net ward for 10 years, so you can't expect me to, uh, to rationally take this thing serious. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes another exclusive 60 Minutes content.